Hello, my name is Brandy, aka Pixelated Tooks. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. And if you're an OG, you know the deal. Welcome back. Uh, this is going to be my first review on my, or final thoughts. First, final thoughts on my one and done series. And it's going to be focused on the game I've been playing for the last couple of weeks called Alchemy Garden. Now, disclaimer, there's a few disclaimers in here. We're just gonna get them, try to get them all out at once. One, I was given this key by Mad Sushi. So first of all, I would love to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to play your game. Um, it, it is available, however, on Steam for $8.99 if you're interested in purchasing this game. But first, please watch this before you do so. Um, that being said, anything that I say in this video will be my honest opinion. Um, I will not be swayed by free games. Um, I don't care what anyone's told you. Um, but also that um, I'm not a professional reviewer. I am someone who plays games and loves to play games and has been playing games for a very long time. So I think that I have um, some room to give my opinion on games that I might want to play or love to play or what have you. Um, so I hope you enjoy this review. Um, so let's get right into it. All right, so I do have things written down. Um, I did take a few notes. So you'll probably see me looking off to my right and please excuse the noise in the background if you hear that. Um, so you'll see me kind of looking to my right a little bit um, just so I just wanna make sure that I follow my points because um, I am going to be all over the place as it is, but I do need to have a list of things that we want to talk about. Um, so just to kind of go off at first about the graphics, I'm not a graphics snob, not by any means. I do love a pretty game, don't get me wrong. Um, I've played Dragon Age Origins and I'm still playing Dragon Age Origins on my channel. And if you guys are familiar with that game or if you've been watching me play, you know those graphics aren't the greatest. I think that game is from 2004. So yeah, it's not the greatest it looks, but the story is compelling. So um, keep that point in mind because that's going to be a big factor in my, um, my recommendations for this game. Anyway, um, let's start off with saying that this game is really gorgeous. I love the art style here. It's very whimsical. It kind of reminds me of a Zelda game for some reason. Maybe it's like one of their recent remakes um, for Nintendo or the Nintendo Switch. I don't have a Switch, so please don't quote me. I'm not familiar on release dates, even though I watched E3. I have no idea, um, but it, for some reason, the graphics kind of give me a Zelda feel, old school Zelda feel, um, or like a remake of a, a old school Zelda game. Um, very gorgeous graphics. Um, the, the world, the little island that you're on is very pretty and it has different biomes and they all have a different kind of feel to it. And I really, really enjoy that about the game. Um, so yes, right off the top, I give the graphics 10 out of 10. Now I won't be scoring this, but I'm just telling you, this is how I feel about the graphics. Um, now let's talk about the gameplay because that's important. Um, I guess I should tell you right off the bat, you are starting off on a little island and you're given a small house um, as your starting, your starting area or what have you. And when you walk out of your house, there's a little, um, little stand where you're going to what it looks like you'll be selling something okay so this is a game where your main objectives are to garden to um, create potions and to sell what you've created in your store and you start off again with a stand what i assume later from what i've seen you can um, grow that stand or upgrade um, later on in the game. Another disclaimer, I did not get that far to tell you if that is true or not, but this is what I've 
heard or read and seen other people playing on YouTube. And I tried not to watch too much because I, I didn't want any spoilers if there were going to be any. So um, this is all of things that I have um, basically experienced in my own gameplay. So if you want to see more, I highly recommend going to see other channels. Melanin Sims is also playing this game or has also played this game on her channel. And I will make sure that I link her channel in the description box. Okay. All right. So let's talk about um, the the potion crafting or crafting in general. All right. Um, first things first, potions are um, your, your bread and butter as far as like sales are concerned. Um, you are supposed to mix potions, create them, upgrade them, sell them uh, for profits and wash, rinse, wash and repeat. Um, and you you keep your stocks up by farming herbs and or, and or growing them in your garden. Um, this game is definitely chock full of farming, exploring your little island, and they encourage you to pick every single flower that you find. Big mistake. <laughs> on my part because I am a person that's used to playing looter shooters or looting games like Diablo or games like Fallout and um, Elder Scrolls uh, where you're picking up everything and inventory is based on um, weight not the amount of bag space you have in this particular game it's about bag space and you don't have a lot of backspace to start off with. That's one of my gripes, but that is perfectly fine for a game like this or even the beginning of um, a game because um, even in games like Skyrim or Fallout, you don't have a lot of carry weight available because you know your stam is low. Um, and I have hair on my face and I hate that, sorry. Um, yes, so. There is that. Um, what else? Yeah. So, backspace is kind of limited, and the, the problem that I have with the limited backspace is that you have no way of dropping uh, items from your bag when you are trying to pick something up, say for a quest, and you just don't have the room for it. Um, you can't just drop something. So I ended up using my stand. Um, the slots on the stand, like there's three little slots. I ended up using that as temporary um, storage. Um, I don't recommend buying anything from Pops in town. That includes tools, that includes storages, big storage bins, because those things come, oh my gosh, this is getting, oh, there we go. Those things come later in the game um, when you're completing quests. Why I looked over here, I don't know. Um, so you will earn, um, you will gather, earn tools, you will earn storage as you quest. Um, so I don't recommend going to spend any money that you've earned on game very early on things like that, especially very early in the game. I'm going to be repetitive here because you don't have a lot of money as it is and storage bins cost like 800 gold a piece. And, um, I would just wait to get a free one but be mindful that your storage is going to be limited. So don't go willy nilly just picking up flowers everywhere um, because you're going to have to need, you're going to need room for um, crafted items like your powders and things like that. Um, you will have a mortar and pestle. So speaking of powders, um, you'll use that to grind up herbs and flowers and coal um, to create powder so you can conco concoct um, different potions. What I did like about the potion, the crafting, is that it was, um, you had to build on it. Like you had to make, first make, um, like, I don't know, like a, your base, right? And then you build off that base to make other potions. What I did not like is the fact that it felt very limited um, as far as like how you were to discover different potions. I'm assuming when you upgrade to a potion shop, um, it will open up like an additional um, 
alchemy table or an upgraded version of the alchemy table that you get early in the game and then you can um craft more potions i as a suggestion and i'm not sure if the game engine can even handle this i would have loved to see something like where you can actually um consume or taste um herbs like if like your elder scroll skyrim um in that game if you tasted a herb you you were able to figure out the chemical properties and then it op you, you learned a recipe most of the time you learned a recipe or you upgraded a recipe that you you already knew or something um games like wow a world of warcraft um you as you um as you create potions um you learn different recipes or you level up and then you can go to a trainer and you can learn more recipes i would have loved to see something like that in the game um rather than uh, well what i thought was oh if i continue to make potions um it'll i will either um learn something from making a new potion or the potion will upgrade as I make more of it. I don't know. It didn't seem to work for me. Also, you can't mix and match um, herbs and make your own stuff or fail at that potion. It just, you just didn't, the table just didn't respond. It'll just say basically these don't go together. So you have to follow the recipes as is. Um, I think it would have made it a little more interesting if those things were involved or that kind of game mechanic was available um but again it may be engine limiting who knows um or limited to the engine that they're using um also i i hate to like go right into the cons but i didn't like the fact that you could only make one potion at a time um i think i would have loved i know i would have loved it more i could make multiple potions at once put all the herbs for that particular recipe in there that i had make multiple potions or mass produce potions or even have a chance to proc an additional potion um that would be great um and even that would go hand in hand with the mortar and pestle um if you did watch my video or if you're familiar with the game you know that there is a mini game with the mortar and pestle and you use that to grind up your herbs and make powders you grind coal and make powders but in order for you to make multiple of those you had to push or you to pop these bubbles and the bubbles got faster or smaller as you progress that was fun at first it really was i enjoyed that i like the hand-eye coordination type game but after a while it started to get a little annoying i was kind of like all right i'm over it um can't i just get a proc there can't i just like oh you had 25 percent chance of getting additional powders granted this is not um there's n there isn't a skill tree in this game that i know of i didn't see anything um so i don't know how they would have made that work um, or how that would have made sense. But again, just my thoughts, that's all. Um, but I did enjoy um, creating the potions and doing the mini game and things like that for a little while, it was kind of fun. Um, just a quick tip for those of you who are playing the game or are looking into playing this game. Um, the quest lines that you have, the quests that you pick up, these are very fetch type quests, like get 25 of these or five of these or whatever. I'm okay with that. But I will say don't pick up both alchemy and gardening um, quests. I would just stick with one or the other. And personally, I would pick up gardening quests first because those are going to be the easiest ones to get done um, because you could just go out and, and pick uh, flowers and you know complete your task and you'll earn of course you'll earn money um, you'll earn um, for your tools you'll earn money for or you'll earn tools um, you may even earn a storage bin I'm, I'm thinking one of the quests you get a storage bin I can't remember which one it was um, but I will say this too um, be careful again with your storage and amount of storage that you have um, and the fact that once you start picking flowers and things like that, you'll start seeing some uh, rarer flowers pop up here and there. Interesting enough, I don't know um, 
like how that's determined like the rarity or like when they spawn if it's like a seasonal thing if it's like um a day night thing i didn't see any seasons it all seemed to be a very like tropical area um because there was no snow there was no rain again could be um due to the engine or it could just be because it's early access and they haven't added weather um or it just might never ever happen um but you can go and pick in the different biomes, like you can pick um, roses and like the flowery biome, and then there's woods. So there's like lilium in the woods, and then there's a swamp, you've got hibiscus and swamp iris there. And then there's some like really rare flowers in each area, really cool looking flowers. I'm not very familiar um, with all of them. Some of them I am, but really interesting, kind of cool way to learn about different, uh, flowers and herbs um so yeah that was kind of interesting that was cool um but it's again it's a very limited in in the exploration i don't know if this will open up as the game progresses through development um or it could be you're just on that island and that's it because you can open up different or purchase different properties there's like two different houses outside of your own and um, one's in town and one's in the swamp. Now, I don't know if there's going to be any differences in these houses or if it's just additional property. Um, my theory is the, the house in town is actually your potion shop. If you're playing this game, correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments below if that is true or not. Again, I've tried not to watch other videos, so I don't have any spoilers. There isn't a storyline, so I'm not really worried about that, but I do like to be still surprised. Um, and I think that's another con for me is there isn't a storyline. I just like um, to have not just goals, not just completing quests, but I like to have a nice little storyline to keep me interested or to even care about the people in the town. Um, there are three people that are currently in the town beside yourself. There's Pops. There's Silent Bob and there's a suspicious one. I, they don't actually have names except for Pops. The other two are just, they just pat around. There's a guy that's in like a, a knight, um, an armor, like knight armor. And then there, the suspicious one I call him or the suspect, he's in like a wizard uh, outfit and all you can see are like his eyes. They pat around town um, and they end up being your your biggest like patrons. They don't talk to you any other time, but as soon as you open your store, they are there. And that was actually kind of fun. The store, I'm just gonna go ahead and hop right into that. Um, once I figured out how the store, your little stand actually works, um, once I made my potions, I put them up on the stand, opened it up, and Silent Bob suddenly appeared like, hey, what's up? You know, he didn't speak. We still need to work on his skills. But um, he came over and he checked out what I had on the table and he walked away a little upset. Yeah, he was a little upset with me because apparently I was robbing people with the prices that I had. But that was a learning experience because I had no idea. Um, I lowered my prices and he came back, but he did not buy anything on the table. As a matter of fact, he had a request. Um, and he had a flower over his head and I assumed from that that he was requesting that particular flower. So I ran back to my house, opened up my storage bin and I grabbed the flower and brought it back, priced it and he bought it. I priced it correctly or whatever and then the suspicious one came up and he had a request I did run back to my house once again and do the same now so it, it behooves you to make sure that you have um, flowers in your in your inventory when you are opening up your store that way you're not playing the run and fetch game because you only have so much time to even um, fulfill those uh, requests and if you miss out you miss out i ended up making some gold on a little bit of gold like 250 gold in my first round and it was kind of fun i had a lot more fun doing that than i did actually creating the potions and things like that but again maybe that's something that will gradually get better as the game as you uh go further on the game um 
So another thing that I did have concerns about was some of the um, the controls, not necessarily the um, the movement in the game, except for maybe the physics was a little weird because you could actually jump, completely jump a river like you were catching air, like I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Like it was that much air between you and the river and you just, you made it, you know, like Air Jordan. Um, but more or less like moving inventory around, I noticed that sometimes the game wouldn't respond or it was hard to get to move um, items from the alchemy table or from your inventory to the alchemy table. Got a little uh, frustrating, even from, even on the, the, um, the stand, it was hard to move things around. That was a little bit frustrating to happen a little more than I would have liked it, but that was probably my only gripe about some of the um, actual controls in the game. Um, I would have loved to see a third person view. Um, again, this might be an um, engine thing or maybe that's not something they prefer. Fine, I just like to be able to switch back and forth um, because sometimes being a first person constantly, especially with um, the tools as large as they are, uh, they can be kind of, um, they can take up your screen a little bit too much and they can be kind of blinding in a way. Um, I have that problem with, um, other games too. Speaking of tools, tools, the tool degradation in this game is ridiculous. Like stuff degrades so fast, breaks so fast. Like, um, your pickaxe, your, um, your axe, um, those things, the hoe, the, they, the garden hoe, they break so fast. The good thing is these tools are really cheap and also you can create these on your workshop bench, um, which I highly recommend. You don't necessarily have to keep going to pops all the time, but you can farm these items up like stones and things like that very easily um, around the town. So buying from Pops all the time, dropping 150 gold here and there for tools um, may not be ideal if you wanna you know, save up money to buy those other properties. Um, so would I recommend this game? Those are my final thoughts. These are going to be my final, final thoughts. Look, if you're into um, farming games and you like the fetch tasks and things like that, things that are very kind of mundane and you don't really have to think about it too, too much, I would definitely recommend this game. It was fun for what it was. It was really fun um, for being early access. I'm kind of excited to see what they add to the game as they progress. So I definitely will be keeping an eye out on it. Um, I don't know if I'll re be updating you, but you know, follow me on Twitter. Maybe I'll have some screenshots or things like that. Um, also, um, just the, just the, the whole environment of the island and, um, just the, it being just as pretty and beautiful as it is. I think that's kind of cool. Um, and the fact that you can upgrade your house and um, build on that. Just quickly touch on that uh, because I didn't um, before. You can add um, like decorations and flower pots and things like that to your um, your house. I played around with that one a little bit, not too, too much. Um, I will say the controls are a little touchy there too, but I enjoyed that. So that is definitely something that I would get into. So if it's something that you enjoy decorating and kind of building a little bit, it's not like super, super detailed from what I gather. Um, but if you enjoy something like that, I would definitely recommend it. If you're someone that's into storyline, um, into more de um, deep to deeper quests, I'm into um, a more intuitive gameplay or um, being able to interact with um, NPCs around the world. Probably not going to be your cup of tea or if you're just not into farming games at all, I would definitely obviously not recommend this for you. But um, that being said, I do think this would be a cool mobile device game. Oh my gosh, sacrilegious. If you're a gamer, if you're a real gamer um, and you, you mobile games are not actual games. I've heard that. Okay, I've, I've said that myself, sorry. Um, but don't come for me in the comments. 
do, do, do not. I yes, I can be a PC gamer snob sometimes, you guys. PC masteries. Um, but I also play console too, so. Um, but if you're if I feel like this would be a cool mobile game. I think that it would be a great way to kind of pass the time away if you're on the bus or train or whatever on going on a trip. I think this would be kind of cute um, if they did uh, move this over to mobile, who knows. Um, but yes, honestly, my overall, overall thoughts are, I think this is a really cute game. I will definitely be keeping an eye out. I will definitely be playing a little bit more on my own time. And if you're into this type of game, I highly recommend dropping the nine bucks on Steam for it. But if you play this game already, or if you plan on playing this game, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Or, you know, again, if you plan on trying it out, mm, excuse me, sorry, frog in my throat. Uh, I've recorded this like three times, guys, so. Anyways, that's all I have for you. But before I let you go, if you're not a member of this family and you want to join the party, by all means, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know every time I upload. I'm here at least three to five times a week, which is quite a bit. But anyways, until next time, guys, I will talk to you later. Ciao.